Rather than give you a boring oral history about who I am and where I came from, I thought it would be a good idea to introduce you to a few key investors that I worked for that got me started in this. And today we have a super special guest of who we're going to meet. And before we go sit down with him, I thought I'd explain a little bit about where I was in the point of my life. So I was 22, newly single, had a two-year-old son, struggling to make ends meet. I didn't even have air conditioning in my car. I just dropped out of college. I know, awful. I was very, very, very low. I asked my dad for some advice, who is a successful contractor, and he made the suggestion that I should become a real estate agent. I had just got my license and I had started at Realty Executive. I was assigned a mentor, and the only piece of advice that she ever gave me was telling me that she would never use me to buy or sell a home. So I started working my sphere. I started open housing. I started reaching out and trying to farm an area, and I wasn't having any success. And this wonderful man that you're about to meet here in just a second, he took me under his wing, he saw me, he rented an office right next to where I was working every day by myself and asked me if I wanted to make some extra money. And so I ended up working for him, going and running keys, evicting people, doing things because he was busy flipping houses and buying and selling things that he had picked up at the trustee sale auction. So working for him was the first paradigm shift that I had that kind of took me from thinking, the only way to make money as a real estate agent was working with retail buyers and sellers, meaning someone who's going to actually live in the house themselves. And it showed me that there is a whole other world with tons of money being made, really fast paced and super fun by working for this wonderful investor and home flipper. So without any further ado, let's go sit down with Randy Duncan. Hi, welcome back to my channel. I am here with a bit of a legend here in the Phoenix Valley, Randy Duncan, which I was lucky enough to work for when I first got my real estate license. And so how I ended up working with a wonderful investor who's also a licensed realtor himself was kind of a bit of an accident. I didn't necessarily seek to work with investors with my license, but you are the perfect person for me to kind of dip my toes into a different side of real estate and see what was possible. This was kind of my first chance to see what it was like on a different side. It was um, a different time. Um, yeah. And I've always uh, enjoyed helping yeah. agents get started. And, oh yeah. You know, yeah, somebody has to take the time because they, they really don't teach you very much in real estate school about the, the industry and the business and the, the daily requirements. When I got my license, everyone told me, what are you doing? Like we're in the middle of a recession, you're not gonna be successful. You know, people were leaving the business, mortgage officers were, you know, moving back in with mom and dad, you know, after making tons of money and living in big houses and driving BMWs, like things were difficult, but you were doing incredibly well. So a lot of people might not know what you do, but you're a home flipper and you were also at the trustee sale at that time. And were you one of the first people that was there bidding? Historically, I've done uh, trade-ins for home builders. I've done contingencies for home builders. And in the previous cycles, I've been around for a long time. The home builders always figured out how to sell houses, yeah. no matter what, you know, they're public companies and they have a lot of money and they can buy interest rates down and they can do a lot of creative things. Yeah. And they were always able, and so I never worried that the next cycle would would impact my world very much because I was tied to the public companies. Yeah. And uh, that was the, the 08, 09 cycle was one that they couldn't figure out. And, and most of them, both of them virtually went out of business. Uh, Dior Horton lost $2 billion with a B. Holty lost $2 billion. Uh, all the small builders just went broke and faded out. Yeah. Um, we went from a from a market in, in 06 that um, the homeowners built 65,000 new homes. And uh, in my eight or nine, they were building 3,000. Um, so I was talking about a dramatic uh, change of, uh, so I had to reinvent myself once again. How and, interesting. Um, so it was a matter of figured it out. And, uh, and I, um, I used a bidding service and uh, bought and sold a couple houses and sort of figured it out. And then uh, just got on the phone and called some investors. And um, and then then first thing you know we were doing ten a month and um, so we were, we were flying. That's so, crazy. Um, 
But yeah, it was really, I, I called uh, one of the Canadian guys that I've done some business with and he says, okay, I got some money laying around. How about I send you 500 uh, for a starter? Um, and um, and then he just wired 500,000 to my bank account. Wow. And then and we started doing well. Yep. And he says, okay, I'm gonna send you another 500. Wow. And, um, and then I found myself uncomfortable with a million dollars of his money in my bank account um, that the IRS would somehow decide I was a heroin dealer or something. <laughs> and uh, so I made him fly down here. And um, after 9-11, they wouldn't open a bank account in his name unless he walked into the branch. Okay. So I picked him up from Calgary, uh, or he flew down from Calgary one July, and he bitched and complained the whole time because it's too hot here, and he could be playing golf in Calgary. Yeah. And um, so I, I took him to the airport and tried to buy him lunch. He says, it's too hot to eat. Take me back to the airport, and I'm going to wait and get on the next plane to Calgary. <laughs> and so he was in town just long enough to open a bank and move the money from my account into his account. And... Uh, so we work together long enough that um, and his goal really is to play golf every day. Yeah. And um, but uh, the United States government kicks Canadians out after six months. Yeah. And he didn't he had enough economic activity here in town with me that he was able to get a green card and, and, and stay until the snow melted in Calgary. And he could go play golf up there. So he only really wants to play golf. Yeah. And uh, and uh, so he can stay here as long as he wants and um, and not have to go to Calgary when there's still snow on the ground. Yeah. What a mutually beneficial partnership for him. Yeah, we made a lot of money together. That's amazing. And the perfect partner, he, of the 100 plus homes that you know, we bought and sold, uh, just this one man, he looked at two. Yeah, I mean, he why not? He Complete money. passive investor. He didn't care. Yeah, could care less made as long as you're money, making money. taxes. Yeah. Um, and uh, he didn't care. That's amazing. Let me unpack what you just went through because that is, there's so many really cool things that you said um, a lot of people, I think, especially when you're in your 20s and 30s, you're trying to figure it out. You think you're going to get to the point where you figured it out. You have, you know, your money is coming to you. You figured out how to be a good spouse. You've, you're a parent. And it's really interesting to hear from so many people that life isn't always like once you figured it out, it doesn't mean that it's going to last you 40, 50, 60 more years until you retire, sometimes you have to pivot and learn something new. Exactly. And what you were doing, you know, that full industry, you know, took a nosedive. And no way. Yeah. Go on. It's fascinating to me too, because during the last recession, this was something that I, I knew was going on, but I didn't think that I could play in. I didn't think that I could ever, you know, flip a house or go bid on a house or do anything like that, which is... In hindsight, I'm looking back and I, I know that you bought a few houses for, you know, $60,000. Amazing. Three bedroom, two bathroom, stucco, tile roof houses for 60 grand. And it's just crazy to think that those deals were there. And I'm like, what was the thing that made you think, you know what, I can do this? Or were you just like, I'm going to do this. I'm going to figure it out. Uh, I'm going to figure it out. Mm -hmm. I'm going to try it. Yep. And if I can make money. Yeah. Um, and then I'm going to scale it. Yeah. And um, the arrangements I had with the Canadians and several other investors is that they would put up 100% of the money. So I didn't have to have any money. Yeah. And um, and then I did the remodel, yeah. um, provided the labor and the financing for the remodel. And then we split the profits 50-50. So the, the Canadian guy I mentioned, um, I would send an email to his controller and the controller and tell her to cut a check to Tiffany and Bosco, you know, for 60 grand. Yeah. And then I'd go to the bank and pick the check up. Yeah. And then we'd drop it off at Tiffany and Bosco and we'd get a deed. And then we'd sell the house and the money would go back into his bank account. And then once a month, we'd uh, look at the books and I'd get a check. And his money just got recycled over and over and over and over again. I know. And um, so it worked well. That and is again, amazing. And I think there are a lot of people that, really don't want to get up and deal with the drywall guys and, no. and the paint guys and pick out the carpet. And they're afraid that yeah. if you can uh, give them some courage and confidence that you can do it. Um, and then after you do one or two um, and they make a little money, like the Canadian guy, they'll throw more money at you. Yeah, they've got lots proof of, money. of concept. Yeah, there's lots of money in the world um, for successful business uh, adventures. I completely agree. And that's one of the other things too that's really interesting is a lot of people think, that, you know, you hear the OPM, other people's money and having an investor um, who is willing to, you know, 
fully invest for the purchase price of that house, were you paying him interest on that or just splitting profits? No, no, he didn't uh, run any kind of a meter on it. So it saved us, uh, you know, the obvious uh, other option is hard money. There are hard money guys in town, but that's a uh, point a month. And um, whereas in this particular case, I had no money cost. Um, your profit but, margins are way better than most well, people. But, but again, I was splitting. Yeah, so, yeah, so yeah, yeah. Potentially, um, I could have made more, but the stress level of making payments on a half dozen houses or a dozen houses at twelve percent annually um, is is it as is, is something else altogether. How did you meet some of your investors? Did you just meet them um, through just guys that I'd done business with? You know, I've been I've been an agent for. 40 years. And uh, so there were guys that I had done business with that, um, that had a certain level of trust. Um, you know, it's hard, it would be hard for a new person, but one of the investors I work with, his model, our motto is that he, he, he doesn't do business on a personal level with anybody that he hasn't known for 20 years. He doesn't have, you know, some sort of a history with that knows that haven't been indicted or, you know, had problems or gone broke or, you know, stolen anybody's money. And, um, and mostly, the, you know, the guys that I've worked with, um, I send them a little performa um, the night before um, that we're going to, these are going to auction tomorrow and send them a little performa. And they go, yeah, okay. We like it, and, yeah. And, um, and they, we, we talk about, you know, bid parameters and what we can pay. And um, so, yeah, not, nothing more complex than that. Yeah. Um, I would uh, I would get the, the auction sheets the night before. Yep. For two counties and sometimes three. Okay. Uh, to sign on which houses I wanted to go after. Yep. And uh, nearly every morning, we uh, I saw the sun come up in Pinell County. And I know. So I, was, so I was driving to Pinell County and then worked my way back through. Um, we'd go through Queen Creek and or Maricopa, uh, Casa Grande, Queen Creek, and then maybe a couple of stops in Mesa. And uh, I, in that moment in time, um, I had a better success in Pinell County. Yeah. Than I did buying in Maricopa County. There's less competition. Yeah, much less. Um, and, uh, you know, that all changed, of course. Yeah. But everybody got on board and BlackRock and the, you know, oh, yeah. professional investors came to town. Yeah. So, you know, n nothing, nothing good lasts forever. Forever. Yeah, that's true. That's very true. You know, one of the most interesting things that I think, too, is like um, the people who can see a change in the market and pivot. There is a level of um, like you're not risk averse. Like you are fine with taking the leap and learning something new, figuring it as, out as you go, which I think is really cool. A lot of people right now have completely exited the market because they're afraid. They don't know where it's going to go and they just want to wait until it's normal. And you've been an agent for forever, you know, like the market's never really normal. It, it, I liken it to a change in the tide. Mm -hmm. um, and, and sometimes the tides are higher and sometimes they're lower. Yeah. And depending on the cycles of the moon. And, and the hardest time is when the tide is changing. Yeah. And it, you don't know how far it's going to go out. No. And, and, and you, know, you know technically it should come back. Yeah. And both of us are fortunate enough to be in this industry in Arizona. Yes. Uh, I can't imagine being... And in a place that didn't have the net in my in migration that we have, yeah. and you know we'll recover. Yeah, whatever's happening right this minute, um, uh, we'll it'll be I can guarantee. Yeah, it'll be very different. Mm -hmm. um, the Fed will figure out inflation. Yep. and then interest rates will come back down again. Mm -hmm. And uh, in the meantime, Toshiba and all kinds of other plants are building these giant facilities, employing hundreds and hundreds of hundred thousand lawyer guys. Yeah, they're gonna need a house to live. They're gonna need somewhere to go. So we have a lot of amazing neighborhoods in the valley that are that are older mm -hmm. and desirable. Yep. And um, I, my common denominator in, in the real estate agent as a real estate agent is that almost no one has any money, mm -hmm. uh, very much money. They have maybe money for a down payment. Yep. The idea of money for a fix up. Very and, rare. And if you're talking about the family mm -hmm. that's coming to town, yep. they can't stay in the extended stay suites with nope. the mom and the dad and the gold retriever nope. and two kids <laughs> yeah. while you're remodeling a home. No. And they're coming from another state. They don't know how to do it anyhow. Yeah. Uh, so people will pay for updated homes. Yes. Especially to be in desirable close-in neighborhoods. Yeah. Uh, with good schools and close to- Schools and the shopping and the restaurants yeah. and- All the that lifestyle. stuff. Yep. Uh, the there some of the young families that, that not the the you know the highly compensated you get to make choices sometimes the, the poorer folks you know the old joke was a uh, drive till you qualify yep and, um, so they uh 
they, they, they don't have choice if they get to live in Coolidge. They yeah. have to live in Coolidge and Casa Grande, a place like that, and commute. Yeah, a little bit further out. Another group of folks that know where they want to live. Yeah. But they don't really want to live in a 60s or a 70s house. No, they don't. Uh, they want to live in a 2022. Yeah. And, and not live in Queen Freak. No. Where the 2022s are. Yeah. So, uh, yeah. So I think there's going to be an ongoing need for... Um, for flippers, absolutely. For um, it's it, as I said, um, the the tide is still going out. Yes, in my opinion. I and, think so too. Uh, the temporary unknown. Mm -hmm. I think there's probably safer investments in the lower price ranges. Yeah, than the higher price ranges. I agree. Um, I think that the higher stuff got a little got a little puffy. Yes, and uh, <laughs> we've seen it around here. <laughs> and it needs to back up a little bit. Yeah, I agree. This is really interesting, too, to talk to you because, you know, we're kind of on, you know, we're, we're currently going down a little bit. And so I was curious to see what your plans are for 2023 and if you're going to kind of do a repeat of what you did last recession in 08, 09, 10, 11, or are you thinking more like I want to enjoy life and enjoy my wife and my kids and my grandkids? I'm, uh, I'm conflicted. So you're feeling conflicted. Conflicted. Um, I, I I believe I have enough income. Yeah. To uh, not work. Absolutely. Um, and uh, which uh, tends to make you lazy, you know, <laughs> or it can make you lazy. Yeah. Um, and for the last fifteen and maybe twenty years, mm -hmm. I've uh, I've always had six. Prided myself in having six to eight weeks of vacation. Yeah. In my mind, a minimum of six weeks. Yeah. And and that doesn't include a four or five day weekend. Yeah. Once a month. Yeah. And um, so you have to have some time for uh, again family and yourself. And yeah. So for uh, 23, we've got uh, three weeks uh, booked in Ecuador. Oh, wow. Uh, the Galapagos cruise and uh, a little scuba diving and a little hiking in the jungle. And um, then we've got a, a trip to uh, Europe in June. And oh, um, our, we've, we've missed out on being on the African continent. Yeah. And um, so that'll knock down all the continents for us. I love that. Yeah. So we're going to go to Europe for three weeks-ish. Okay. Um, bought the ticket to go. And I haven't bought the return ticket yet. Okay. <laughs> so we get home when we get home. Yeah, when you want to. Um, but we're uh, we're watching the snowstorms. Yeah. And we're hoping we're hoping we're going to go to, we have a place in Pine Top. Okay. And um, we plan to be at Pine Top on the 5th. Yeah. And hopefully the storm um, today, mm -hmm. tomorrow, Sunday, and next Tuesday, yep. as scheduled, will mean that the whole mountain mountains. Oh, yeah. And, uh, Very true. So we'll be able to ski for a few days. That'll be and, nice. Uh, we may just go to Colorado. They're getting a little more snow. Okay. So we're, once we're winter in Pine Top, you're only five hours from Colorado. Yeah, you're really close. So, so you can just get up there. Head out. And get it done. Yeah, that's amazing. So, so it, that's the dilemma yeah. of, uh, of working. But I've got, I've got old clients that aren't going to let me do nothing. Right. Um, and um, I didn't plan on working a lot this year mm -hmm. and ended up selling 10 or 12 houses. No, so sure. some, and, and again, that's because they twisted my arm. Yeah, and, they wanted you. And so that so when I see I've got uh, an investor that, that wants to sell some stuff. Yeah. And we're going to sell five or six of them in, in February. Like, got to do it. And uh, so, so that's the, the plan is, is so I'm not, I'm not aggressively um, going after business. Yeah. Uh, and down um, my want, I mean, I've got a, I've got a bucket list that I'm working, working on. Way through. I love that. We're uh, we're at 44 countries and and building, and so we're going to continue to grind out the countries. And there's a couple of seas we haven't been to. Okay. We've been on all the continents. Okay. Then you got to go see the rest of the water then. Yeah. That's there's cool. Some, there's some water that we've missed out on. Yeah. Some places we haven't been diving, and some places we haven't been skiing. Yeah. Got to so do it. That's the plan. I love that. And w when you came in before we started, you were talking about going and checking on one of your flips. So you still have projects going on. How many flips are you doing? Just two. Right Just now. two. Yeah. Um, and then I, um, the uh, my I have a son that's in the land business mm -hmm. with a lot of bank relationships, and um, he proposed a little subdivision of Pine Top to us a couple oh. years ago. Nice. Um, a bank had acquired thirty-one lots from a broke developer. Okay. And another old investor friend of mine and I, I called him up and he said, sure, why not? Let's be householders. And love and, that. Uh, so we bought 31 lots. Okay. And um, 
Uh, I ended up with one. Okay. Um, and then so that we built 30 lot, 30 homes for people. Wow. And uh, we closed the last one uh, two months ago. Perfect timing. So, you know, we're all done with that. Um, it was where our, our timing wasn't perfect because things were slow. Yeah. And we left our prices low. Yeah. And then all of a sudden COVID yeah. turned out to be the very best thing in the world. For, for ever wanting months. it. Yeah. Um, because no one could get on a plane to go to Europe and you couldn't do anything fun. Yeah. You might as well buy a boat or an RV or a second home. Yep. And then at the same time, I think people discovered that they could work from home. Yeah. And, and a lot of bosses didn't want them in their offices. Yeah. So everybody that bought a second home got all kinds of tech and built into it. Yeah. And um, if you could, in Arizona, if you could live at elevation yeah. in the summer, why wouldn't you? Nothing better. And and still get paid. Work on your computer. Exactly. Yep. Get so, out of the heat. Um, we, uh, it took too long to build them. Okay. And we didn't charge enough. Yep. And uh, so... We, we left a lot of money on the table, but there wasn't anything we, you know, once you sold them. You didn't have a crystal ball to know that that was going to happen. And, 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 and we were struggling for COVID. Yeah. And, and then again, scared to death with COVID. Yes. And then and then all of a sudden it turned out to be the best thing ever. Yep. And then they started selling. Mm -hmm. And then we watched our lumber prices go up 400%. Oh, and, yeah. and, and then, you know, we're at Pie Top and, you know, in a community where uh, every subcontractor really is a professional hunter. Yes. <laughs> and and the secondary job is drywall. Yes. Or roofing or whatever. It yeah. Is. Um, so getting those guys to work during a hunting season. It was hard. Uh, or if a snowflake falls. So they were a little small moving, huh? Yeah. To say the least. Uh oh. And not enough of them. Yeah, not enough of them. I think that's why the the public companies from the valley that are going up there with the labor force is so sporadic and Yeah. Unreliable. And not reliable. Yeah. yeah. Not like down here. Exactly. Yeah. How long did it take you, speaking of like your your crews that you work with here, how long did it take you to find and vet really good tradesmen for your flips here? Uh it, it was uh it, it was always balling. Okay. Um and they, they, I think sometimes the tradespeople are good for a little while. Okay. And then they get busy. Yep. And in Pine Top we found that nearly every trade up there uh, wanting to build their own spec home. Oh. And they, so they spent, they spent the morning building a spec home. Yeah. And then the after, late afternoon at their job at... Working with you. Okay. And then and then, then we got Saturday mornings. Oh, and, yeah. And, uh, I think here in the Valley that the, when things were very good at 8, 9, and 10, mm -hmm. um, I was afraid to buy more homes. Yeah. Because I couldn't... I could have bought more homes. Yeah. You know, I had, you know, in the moment, the investors I were working with were mad and weren't buying more. Yeah, they wanted to do more. Why not? And and I was afraid that uh, ongoing afraid, not knowing, I'd never seen that kind of a market before. I'd seen downturns. But not like um, that. Historically, in the Valley, all we ever had, and, you know, a downturn. In California, you got the flu, we'd mm -hmm. get a mild cough, and our prices would flatten out for 18 months. Yep. And then we'd go back to... Total business problem. as usual. Yeah. But the idea of property dropping 70% like it did in, in Pinnell and some of the outlying areas, um, unheard of. Yeah. So it was hard to predict. <laughs> so you, you hated to take on a bunch of inventory. That you didn't know. That it was going to take 14 months to work through. Yep. And then and then maybe there's still another blip and a, another... It's back down. Yep. And yep. whatever you bought as a genius, 18 <laughs> months later, uh, you're a fool. Yep. Because yep. you, you couldn't see it, you couldn't see the future. Yeah, definitely. No, so, but I think labor will continue to be a problem. Yeah. Although in the valley, I, and going forward, once we figure out what direction the market's going, I think the home builders have cut way back. Yep. Yeah. I mentioned they have a son in the land business, and the builders will put every land purchase on hold. Wow. Yeah. Uh, they're not buying anything right now. They're going to work through their existing inventory. Yeah. And uh, wait to see. But what they all realize that if they don't buy land. By the end of 23, yep. they won't have any land to sell. Yeah. 25. Yeah. So um, I have no doubt that the Valley's going to come back strong again. I love that. Uh, like, no doubt. My, and and, 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 and I, I, I don't think the, the citizens of the United States, I don't mean to be political. No, it's Usually it's up to the government. Yeah. And it's up to the government to screw something up. Yes. And um, create inflation mm -hmm. and then crush the market to control the inflation that you cost. Yeah. That's what we're facing right this minute. Absolutely. Very interesting times. Yeah. Yeah. To say the least. But again, I think people are going to continue to buy homes. Yeah. And the builders got creative quickly. Mm -hmm. And I'm seeing home sellers do the same thing. Yeah. Buy downs and the two, three, one buy downs. And, yep. Um, I, I was a, an agent when FHA rates were 18%. Um, 
and uh, the Pulte did the home run plan. So they bought the rate down 7% for the first year. Wow. Then 3%, then 2%. Wow. But ultimately... Yep. You had a 18% whole loan. And I think yep. it, it, and it turned out for the people who sucked their necks out and paid those higher rates, yep. they were rewarded with better pricing Yes. in today's market mm -hmm. um, and and the better pricing, a more competitive market. Yep. I mean, I think we find ourselves in a market right this minute where the young family that just couldn't buy because the investors were buying everything that was under 400000 Now they have a chance. Buy. Yep. And, and they can actually go look at a home, sleep on it, yeah, have a chance to think about it. Think about it, and then even get a seller that will help them pay their closing costs. Yeah, or buy so, down their rate a little bit. Exactly. Yeah. So it's 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 so so depending on how you want to approach it, um, it was um, speaking for myself. You know, I had as many as thirty offers. Yep. On on houses that I had listed. Yeah. And and it was terrible. Yeah. For the young families that wanted to buy, but as a, as a home seller, um, are, are you going to sell for ten thousand over to the investor all cash? Quick no inspection, clubs. boom, done. Yeah. Or deal with the young family that might have a hiccup and, you know, I don't know, and, you know, have some credit thing that pops up. And, yep. Um, you never know. You don't. Yep. But, you know, all cash is all cash. Yep. Cash is king, as I exactly. say. This is so interesting. I, I, I feel like there's so many parallels through history that, you know, you're no matter what you decide to do, you're going to be great. Are you going to play in distressed property a little bit? Are you going to continue to flip a little bit? Are you going to use some of what you learned last recession and make some money or maybe pick up some properties that you can hold on to and put tenants in there? Yeah, my, my word from earlier of conflicted. Um, you, you want to sit on cash yeah. so that you have cash to do Perfect. the flips. Yeah. But on the other hand, um, taking the cash and eliminating some debt, but not having debt is the same as income. Yep. Yeah, yeah, very true. And, and so I, I know that I can always borrow money again. Yeah. Um, and and I know that um, the investors still want to do it. Cash laying around. Yeah. And so if I call them up again and take them to lunch and say, "Here's what I'm thinking about doing." Yeah. And they'll get they'll okay. The who am I writing? Who am I paying? You know, who's the check going to this time? Yep. And they would love to do it again. I'm sure. And I think some of them, even retired investors, um, the guys with money. It's it's exciting for them to be participating in something. Yeah. And and if, and, and if you can, and if your money, if your money is at Wells Fargo right now, if you have a hundred thousand Wells Fargo next year, you'll have a hundred thousand five hundred dollars. Yep. You know, based not on much. Interest rates. <laughs> yep. And in ten years, you'll have a hundred thousand and you know, in two. Yep. Um, based on current interest rates. So if you could take an investor's money and you know turn a hundred and add ten to it, they're happy in three months. You yep. know, their return yeah. is 40-fold over what the bank's paying them. Mm -hmm. and, and in my mind, with very little risk. Very um, little. Less risk than, uh, what is that, Apple, when I traded 64% or 66% yep. of its highs. Yeah. And, and, and who would have guessed in a million years that Amazon and Apple and Tesla yes. would be on sale? I know. Um, so do you, do you invest your money in Apple and Tesla and, and Amazon? Yep. You know they're going to come back. Yep. Yeah. Um, and same with real estate business. So there's a lot of opportunity right now. Despite things looking scary or unpredictable, a lot of people who have completely pulled their money and are just watching to see what happens, there still is so much opportunity. There's there's going to be some opportunities. Um, I, I read uh, this morning in the paper. Um, I say the paper. Who gets a paper? Okay. I read online. You can, yeah. Um, <laughs> that um, might have the Wall Street Journal that said, I think it was, that said that... Um, the foreclosures, mm -hmm. and not foreclosures, they said delinquencies, mm -hmm. um, are um, continue to decline yeah. and have declined for nine years. Wow. Uh, so so delinquencies indicate that there won't be foreclosures, mm -hmm. but there's still divorces and knuckleheads, lawsuits, and, and there's always going to be deaths, and yeah. there's always going to be, um, there's always going to be opportunities. Yeah. Um, and I... I Literally talking to a carpenter and this working on a current flip that I'm working on in Mesa. And, and he said he's buying a home in Munns Park yep. in uh, Flagstaff. Yes. And I said, wow, that's an expensive area. And he said, no, uh, it's an estate sale. Oh, wow. And, and the son doesn't want to spend another dollar in his mom's home. You know, mom didn't spend two bucks on it in the last 30 years. Yeah, definitely and needs some love. Doesn't spend any money. Yeah. And, and they got, they made an offer and then they got an inspection and they adjusted the price. Wow. Adjusted the price again. Wow. And I said, that doesn't sound like the Munns Park Idaho. It's all yeah. $1,000 homes and they sell for more. Yes. And he said, no, this thing's sitting there. 
and it's got some issues. Yep. And he's in the construction industry, and he can take care of it. Yeah, he's so not scary in to him. In this particular case, the carpenter found a deal in a super desirable Flagstaff neighborhood. Yeah. Um, well back a market. Yeah. And uh, so that's his opportunity. Amazing. And and they'll refinance it when the rates get better. Yep. That'll be perfect. So, again, I, I have uh, not not worry one. Yeah. Um, I, I would I, I would be a little concerned if I was a brand new loan officer. Um, <laughs> yeah. I'd be a little concerned, if, uh, you know, if I just leased ten thousand square feet for my title company. Uh, Very true. And, and and as an agent, I think it's going to be a little tougher. Mm -hmm. um, but if you're working with some of those first time home buyers, mm -hmm. um, here's a chance for them to buy. Or you want to work with investors. Exactly. And better. Even if, better. The investors end up, if, if maybe those those slips fly off the shelf That's like they did. Mm -hmm. And I think you need to you need to leave yourself a little more room. Yeah. They need to have a little more equity in them. Yeah. And, and, and at some level, maybe not go uh, go all the way in terms of the remodels. Mm -hmm. Do just some little lipstick. And, yeah. Uh, just do enough. Yeah. Do enough. Yeah. So they're... They're a function functioning property again. Yeah, that's, that's actually really good tips. That's a perfect segue into people who are, even people who, who have been working in this investor field for the last five years, what's going on right now is something that they've never experienced. So speaking to someone who got into it in the last five years or is just getting into it, what are your top tips for picking up a fix and flip? We talked about leaving more equity, so you have to buy it right. You have to buy it a little bit deeper. Do you want to hit on um, some tips for fix and flippers um, that you know of? I think with gas prices, um, Pete, there's still going to be an awful lot of pressure to live in the central locations. Yeah. Whether it's the Southeast Valley mm -hmm. or uh, I live in Tempe. Yeah. Giant fan of Tempe. Yes. Um, central Phoenix. Mm -hmm. um, I, I think that if, if people can... Go in some of the neighborhoods that worked terrific yeah. three years ago. Mm -hmm. um, and an awful lot of those neighborhoods in Tempe yeah. uh, or, or in, in Central Phoenix are continuing to evolve. Yeah. So I think there's opportunities over there. Um, um, having grown up here as a native, mm -hmm. I completely discounted South Phoenix yeah. um, when, during the auction times. I know. And fortunes were made by okay. virtue of buying at 24th Street and Broadway. And when you, grew up, when you grew up in Phoenix, that was a bad area of town and no one wanted to go there. Yeah. And now you drive down Baselight and it looks like Camelback Road. I know. It's beautiful. Um, so it's it's a beautiful, desirable place to live. Mm -hmm. It's very close to Scottsdale and Central Phoenix. I would look close in. Mm -hmm. um, I think that what the 808, 09 market told us was that the, the neighborhoods that struggled the most where, 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 where all the first-time home buyers were. Yeah. Uh, that was uh, Pinell County, and it's also the perimeters of the valley. It's Buckeye and Surprise, yep. and I, I think that that's the majority of the zero-down, bad credit, first-time home buyers bought homes. Yes. And those neighborhoods are likely to suffer yes. more than some of the stable Central Phoenix, Central Mesa, Central Tempe mm -hmm. um, neighborhoods. Yeah. And, and And again, I think that it... it um, the, the way the restaurants and the, the, the just the lifestyle has increased, uh, enhanced in Central Phoenix, yeah. uh, desirable. Same thing with Tempe. Yeah, um, great place and, to live. Um, yeah, and, and with the 202, you know, whether you're living East Mesa or Central Tempe, you know, the valley, it's 15, 20 minutes away from everything anyhow, yes. unless you're in Coolidge, yes. uh, <laughs> unless you're in Surprise. Yeah. So, so I think I would keep an eye on some of the desirable well located neighborhoods yeah. and um and just keep an eye on the market yeah. and you know so it, it, there's nothing better than preparation if you're watching the market and getting a feel for what works and what doesn't work because yeah. there's some brave investors that are out there doing it right this minute yes, they are. and and if you're paying attention you can see the ones that went too far yeah. in the remodel yeah, and, and those that didn't didn't go far enough yeah. and and then figure out a formula and and then be prepared to change the formula because yep. as, as people have money again mm -hmm. um we were talking about custom homes before we went on the camera and at one point in time the builders couldn't put enough jazzy features yes. in homes yeah. just couldn't we've got to make this one jazzier yep. and we have to put a solid gold bathtub in it to get anybody <laughs> to buy it because everybody else is doing solid silver bathtubs yep. um and i think we're we're in a market now with interest rates and housing prices that um, people are going to back off a little on the the ultra uh, ultra expensive 
remodels and, yeah. and features. Yeah. It's easy to do. It's so easy to do. Might as well while we're at it. Yeah. I might as well while we're at it. Yep. While the guys are here and they're working, yeah, let's, just, you know. Yeah. <laughs> turn that turn that island into a waterfall. Well, why not? So just one more sheet of granite. I know. Why not? Only 500. Why not? Yeah. Plus labor. So you got to rein yourself in in times like this. So you got to buy it well, stick to a certain, you know, good, desirable areas, and then stay under a certain price point. I think you good for Find out where, you know, where stuff is still moving. I also was reading that um, the super luxe stuff, uh, we've never seen it fall off. Mm -hmm. And uh, I read that some of the, the, the ultra luxury homes, the sales have fallen off 38%. Yeah. Very unusual. So that's not something anyone would have predicted. Because yeah. just months ago, they were still flying off the shelf. They still were, yeah. Um, and now they're not. Yep. And so that's the uh, the unknown of this market where the sweet spots can be. Yeah. And uh, pay attention and figure out where the next spot is. Yep. Um, Watch, get ready, see what other investors are doing, and then get ready to do it yourself. Preparation. Yep. It's doing the research mm -hmm. and um, and driving around and looking at stuff. I think I think you could the 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 pictures that uh, we investors and real estate agents all put in. Mm -hmm. uh, are are amazingly deceptive, um, <laughs> yeah. and I think that you have to go out and look at real estate. Um, Actually, yourself, uh, yeah. And and, and 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 usually when you put your own eyes on something, you can figure out why that beautiful kitchen and all those pictures failed to sell. Yeah. And usually find a terrible master bathroom, something or something horrible. Yeah. In terms of the neighbor's yard or something of that nature. Yeah. Where you're like, oh, that's why. And and, and I've I've. Uh, um, over the years, bought lunch for some of the women in the office to figure out why one of my flips wasn't selling. Yeah. And, and you bring in three other sets of eyes, and it's super obvious. No other set of eyes. Yeah. It's right. Something that they missed. Yeah. Very true. Color or, you know, whatever it was. You know, just something. Just something I, you know, completely miss, missed the mark. Yeah. Time for repaint. <laughs> um, years ago, I, years ago, I bought a home, um, and we were using crisp khaki. Yeah. As, as the color. Yeah, as the wall color. Um, and um, and Chris Khaki has a lot of green in it to begin with. Yeah. Um, and this home was a Richmond American home, and it had an early generation of tinted dual pane windows. Oh. And they were tinted very green. Oh. So as looks the, extra green. As the sun came in, those tinted green windows, Chris Khaki became grass green. Oh, gosh. <laughs> and, and, and it wouldn't have been grass green had it been clear windows yeah. or a brown bronze tint or something like that. Yeah. Who knew? Yeah, who knew? I came in the house and said, why'd you pay a green? I paid in a crisp khaki. Yeah. I, mean, I was going for neutral. <laughs> uh, I was going for neutral. Yeah. And we ended up repainting the hole. Yeah. I didn't really want to spend the 3000 bucks to paint the hole. But it sold it, I'm sure. And it sold after, after. It, it was still something that I knew in my heart. It was green. Yeah. And we put blinds on. We had plenty of, we tried to do everything but. Paint. Repaint yeah. the hole. Yeah. After all the flooring was in. No, oh, guys. Um, but, um. There's a thousand stories like that that when you thought you had to figure it figured out, it, it wasn't figured out. Yeah. When you learn. Yeah. Try to learn. The same six again. I feel like that's how I am with almost every deal that we do. I'm like, I would have never guessed that, but I learned it now and I'll never do it again. Yeah. It's always something. Yeah. It, it, it takes money out of your pocket. Yeah. Or adds time. Yeah. But it was project. a good good learning lesson. Yeah, absolutely. Well, I wanted to kind of, you know, you, you've got to go do a flip. We're running into lunchtime, but... I just wanted to tell you, thank you for unknowingly showing me that there's a whole other side. I mean, I was struggling thinking I had to work my sphere and do open house houses all the time and farm. And you showed me a completely different side that was going on underneath many agents' noses. You know, if you're a real estate agent and you're only working with retail buyers and sellers, seeing you, you know, when I was working with you, your office, you know, you had Larry in the corner and, you know, you had files and you were doing things and contractors were coming in and picking up checks and draws and, you know, you bought a house and we got to go, you know, put a lockbox on. It was exciting. And there was so much business. Very busy. So yeah, busy. And the, world's, and the office was dead. Dead. Like it was dead as a door. It was dead. And I remember at that time I was like begging people that I knew like, this is a great time to buy a house. This would be great. You should pick one up. And no one wanted to touch anything. And seeing you just absolutely crush, you know, your business and make so much money and have so much fun. When when, when times are going crazy, and when, and my wife was laughing at me last night, we, I was literally online thinking, I wonder if Southwest Airlines is selling tickets cheap. I know. That's all their problems. Yeah. And uh, 
Whistler has a lot of snow right now. Yeah. In Vancouver. Yes. And uh, in Southwest flies to Bellingham, Washington. Oh, perfect. And they had have, they have flights, uh, going flights, yeah. $99. <laughs> and, and, and the return flights were 100 to 7 Perfect. And, and Bellingham is a, a, you know, an hour and a half drive yeah. to, to Whistler Black Hole, <laughs> in the big ski resort in all of North America. Yeah. So, so sometimes when things are in turmoil, it, there's an opportunity. Yeah. If you want to take a chance on Southwest, that might be taking a big chance. <laughs> yeah, did, you're actually going to make it. Next three weeks. Yeah, it's going to be very fine. Yeah, Whistler's going to have plenty of snow. Yeah. Three weeks, so why not? Mm hmm. Sorry, I'm about to cough. But anyways, I just wanted to thank you for coming and talking to me and thank you for showing me what's possible because, you know, I took the learning lessons that you had and, you know, it took me a while to put them into action, but we definitely did. And a lot of, um, you know, where I am at the time, I mean, you you were just saying, hey, you were dating a guy that was in, owned a golf company and that's what Pace was doing at that time. And so to see, you know, where my life has, has gone because of what you showed me was possible is really cool. So I really appreciate you. And time. thanks for giving me a good kick in the butt and showing me what, you know, what you could do and how it's exciting to make money on this side. So I appreciate you.